Thank you for Patreon now for donating to the Patreon. Hey guys, Vinny is back to the Shadowverse Champions Battle video. So, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let's go to the shall we? So, this time we have the final video for the Shadowverse Champions Battle series, and that is the thumbnail reveal. A review. And I started this in um, the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Let's Play, where at the end of every major Let's Play, no offense to the Uncharted videos, I would do a thumbnail review and just like kind of look over all of them again, see how they were all doing, and my like why I picked them and why these thumbnails made it over other thumbnails if there was competition for them. Hint, there kind of was and kind of really wasn't, or like I never really worked on the practice ones, or like the ones that weren't supposed to be on there. So let's go ahead and get this started shall we and see what we got this set of thumbnails is going to be a lot more confusing than the one in, that was in the pokemon one because there are so many more thumbnails that happen in between this let's play compared to the pokemon let's play and i also started um ed editing more thumbnails on this website so frankly i couldn't really get it consistent so let's just go ahead and get the started shall we and see what we got and i'm also sorry for not getting the puzzle quest in the or just like the regular quest in the um thumbnail or not but like before the thumbnail video and the reason why i chose not to do those is because i'm not about to sit through three hours of unnecessary puzzles especially when i'm not qualified to answer any of those puzzles that are beyond the normal difficulty and even the normal difficulty ones kind of 50 50 on and as for the puzzles i don't like sitting through 15 plus hours of annoying content that I don't have to. So let's go and get the start and see what we got and re uh, review our thumbnails. So first up we have the first one. It's just very simple. It is the very first thumbnail. Every first thumbnail of all of my Let's Plays, except for weirdly enough that Pokemon one is, or like the Pokemon ones in general, are typically the game art or like the poster art of the game. So in this case it was the poster of Shadowverse Champions Battle. I believe this is more or less the exact photo that was used. Um, you know, it gets to show off all the characters that are present, Motoru, Lucia, um, forgot what her name was, Alice, there we go, Kazuki, Mimori, Kai, Kagura, Hiro, and Rei, um, just very simplistic, and that's pretty much all I can say about that thumbnail, it just kind of gets everyone that we need to get in there, in there. Now, on this website, the thing is kind of disorganized, I believe the next thumbnail is the this one the tutorial episode we're pretty much is as it sounds like we're getting our first real tutorial matches we're playing against the budcraft players we're playing against the forestcraft player in the courtyard of the uh in the, of the what's it called the school tensei academy so i wanted to put you know their symbols up here so that we know who we're fighting against and then i also wanted to like i don't really know exactly what to do so i just put like the screenshot that we got of hero's deck and our deck and then you know i found our character on the Shadowverse wiki, and then finally I took this screenshot of us winning a game. I think this was against the Budcraft player. It was either against the Budcraft player or the Forestcraft player. I don't know which one it was. I just know it was against one of them. So it's a pretty cool like way to kind of set up the tone, and I have to do this every single time we go through a thumbnail. Great. Okay. I might go out of these out of order, but I'm going to at least try to do it in order the way I remember it. So next up we have the Battle Time thumbnail. So Battle Time was pretty much... I didn't know what to do for this one at first because we already used the, you know, this pose and I didn't want to steal it again. Hint, hint, that did not matter to me later when I ran out of ideas. So instead what I did is I used our portrait, I think either when we are standing in victory, like post a victory or like right before or like some part of the game, we have this pose and then I took the sim, like this one, I took the uh, symbols that we had of the people that we fought. So I took the runecraft, the shadowcraft, the swordcraft, the dragoncraft, and the Havencraft. This was the only other time I could find the Dragoncraft uh, symbol. I don't know why, but after this point, I could never find this Dragoncraft symbol. I had to self-crop one, and as we will come to see, they are pretty bad. So, I don't know why this was the only time I could find it, but I am really glad I could find it here. It was a very simplistic thumbnail. Not too much to say about it. And then, of course, after that one, this is where the order gets funky, because I don't know where the other thumbnails went. I think think it was oh the shadowverse club okay so i didn't actually pull that one up yet but the shadowverse club thumbnail give me a second to go find it okay so it's not going to be of good quality but the shadowverse club thumbnail as we can see it this one's a literal cutscene taken from the game uh you know it's mimori kagura kazuki hero everyone or it's us actually in there uh I don't know who the hell I said, but uh, pretty much all of us getting pointed at by Kagura right before we have this big showdown with her team of people 
and yeah, it was just kind of like a thumbnail I felt like was appropriate for it. It fit the theme. I wanted to get a showdown between like us and Kagura's team, but um, it was not done consistently, so I just chose to make it this thumbnail, also because it was just a really good quality. Um, the next thumbnail, which for some reason isn't in this list, because I think this list kind of either jumbled it up or like half of them got deleted and sent to the abyss of nowhere. Um, so... Yep, that happened. So in response to that, going back to here, um, the next thumbnail we got, sadly I can't get closer to it, is why did I do that? The story behind why did I do that is, as what happens in the video, I question why I made such a horrendous misplay. Sadly I can't, oh I can zoom in on it, okay. Well, anyways, here's the higher version of the Kagura one, but then here's the reason of how, why did I do that. So if we kind of take a close look right here, I had three play points. As we can see, I'm playing Ethica. Now, we can kind of see this right here. I have no evolution points because it's the third turn of the game. I do not know why I played Ethica there. I think I... I don't remember if it was a misclick or if it was, like, genuinely on purpose. And no, it was on purpose because I thought I had evolution points. And I played at the cut, and it lost me the ramp cards. And I don't remember if that's what ultimately led to the loss or not. I know I played a few more misplays during that episode. At least I don't know if it was during that game or not. But I know the Ethica ramp definitely screwed me over. So I feel really bad for it. And it was our first loss on camera, and it was to me being stupid. So I have felt like I had to immortalize that by saying in the thumbnail, why did I do that? And pretty much highlight the moment that I make the mistake that maybe didn't cost us the game, but it felt like it costed me the game. Let me move on to our next thumbnail, which is actually in here, thankfully. And that is one of my favorite thumbnails and something that kind of started a, or like jump started the idea for this uh, series is thumbnails of big boss matches. And that would be Kai's A Genius Among Geniuses thumbnail. So in the thumbnails that have big boss battles, what I've done is I take the character that we are fighting, whether it's a screenshot of them from the game or whether it's just like their cutout from the fandom. And I'll take their ace card. If I took the screenshot from the game, the ace card will be the cut out from the fandom and if i took the um ace card as a cut as i took if i took the ace card from the like fandom like a big scene of it then i'll probably take the character as a cut out from the fandom so all around um i really do like kai's uh, thumbnail thing because it was a really good quality it was of him saying i'm a, geni a genius among geniuses you know he gets to flex the thing his fingers are really weird in this shot we get the big runecraft symbol and we get this really cool art of chrono witch i remember when i first saw this i was like i want to go check the fandom to see if we have a good chrono witch i checked i google searched chrono witch full art and i found this and i was like this is the thumbnail precedent now so this is one of my favorite thumbnails to design and as we'll see with a very other specific one that is actually really close I took a little bit more liberties every single time we edited these, and I had a lot of fun with it. And uh, RuneCraft, like, literally because I kept searching up the symbols, the RuneCraft icon became like an instant search thing in my Google bar, where now I can just kind of find the RuneCraft symbol just by typing it, which is honestly pretty cool. Then the next thumbnail would be something that's not in the thing as well, and that would be the team bonding thumbnail. So the team bonding one, I didn't really know what to do, because it was our first quest thumbnail, and... Um, I already had an idea for a later one, so I felt or so I felt like I kind of had to have with this one. We have all the team members in it, so in this case, we get Hero, we get uh, Ray, us, Kai, Mimori, and Kazuki. And I just slap the words "team bonding" on it, so people know what's going on. It's not just like a random thumbnail, because like at the I didn't really know what to do with it, and like there was no cutscene where we get all of them together, and there was no like actual cutscenes compared to the later ones. So I felt like I kind of had to find a way to put all of us together and that's what i did if you don't remember i think it was operation pop or operation pop from uh kai at the that was suggested i don't remember i'm pretty sure that was the case and then our next thumbnail our next two thumbnails actually are my two favorite thumbnails going into this i'm gonna grab this one first because it's gonna come after that one but um the thumbnail lead after that one was uh the pro player, say Kibikura. So again, like uh, the Kai thumbnail kind of started the precedent of, we have the card in this case, because say it doesn't show the actual ace pursuer goal until much later, and you are not supposed to know what his actual ace is. Pretty much I chose to keep Seiya's ace secret and i chose to go with what we will assume his ace is which is great doom edition but he doesn't have a line with great edition and great edition well he does have a 
I don't remember if he does have a Great Magician or not, but he doesn't have like a you know a special animation Great Magician because Great Magician is not a ultra rare, or legendary, whatever it is. So I um, went to the fandom and just grabbed like the full art of it and I just shoved it on here. And then of course we did a cutout of Seiya. I think this might be from his season two, not from season one, unless it is from season one. I just don't remember what his season one character looks like. And then of course we have the Runecraft symbol. And then this is where the new precedent kicked in, which is I put the character's name and maybe something that. Um, like a title that leads up to the name. So in this case, the pro player, because that's how we knew him in the episode, Seiya Kibakura. And a little more fun fact about this, the original episode was called Shadowverse Champions Battle, Seiya Kibakura, the pro player Seiya Kibakura, the pro player Seiya Kibakura. I don't know what happened. Apparently the video name copied itself twice so pretty much the name was literally like the pro player say say kibakura the pro player say kibakura which i just found funny but uh yeah so this started the moniker of we put a name a character their ace card and their symbol all in the same thumbnail and it looked pretty cool to me but then here's where my favorite came in. So obviously two a few episodes after Kai's which I thought was really cool. Then we have Seiya but the great magician quality kind of lowered it down for me. Then we have this. I thought this was perfect we have the symbol we have a cut scene from the game we have the perfectly cropped like pre-cropped because it came straight from the fandom full art of the character's ace card kagura's in this case holy saber and we get to have their title which fits their color the masked maestro on the same thumbnail it's all so high quality it looks so beautiful i love this thumbnail it was straight up my favorite making like you have no idea when i was shoving all these thumbnails onto the videos and i was getting ready to prepare this one i was like this is the one i'm looking the most forward to i thought it was great i think it's beautiful and it's like definitely one of the top five if not in the top three favorite of my thumbnails i made for this let's play i genuinely think it's one of the coolest because it's just so amazing in terms of quality and especially like how the shield kind of like lines off here and it like goes into kagura's chair it's just so great i love it so much and how like how she looks down at the mask it, it's just perfect i think it's one of my greatest thumbnails and then thumbnail after that again i don't know why it's not on Oh, well, okay, some of these thumbnails were screenshots, though. Like, this one was a screenshot, and then so was this one, actually, which is why it's not on the uh, on the uh, Photoshop thing. And then this one was also a screenshot, so it would make sense why they're not in the thing. So this thumbnail right here, the ranking journey begins. Uh, it's right after Kagura's match, you know. Um, we have the ranking journey beginning i knew exactly what i want the thumbnail to be it took so long to find a clear shot of it but i finally got one where like we kind of get to see the rank go up we get to see all these people we got to fight we get to see like either you win the little ranking thing go up and we get to see mike has to say clear your critical trial again straight up a, a screenshot i had to watch the video several times to find the perfect mo moment and i did find it eventually which is cool so like there's not much more to say about that one that one was just kind of simplistic um Next up, I believe I saw was the first main team quest thumbnail, which would be this one. So more team quest, am I right? Yeah, so more team quest, it, it's as it sounds. It's very simple. So every, so I used, this is the first time I used this and I didn't want to use it as much as I did. I used it like, I think three, two or three more times that more than I actually wanted to. Or I wanted this to be like a kind of staple, not necessarily a staple, but like a kind of thing where if I don't have a background for thumbnails or like I don't have screenshots, I can just like take the, or like the original Shadowverse logo and shove it in. And then I put like, you know, the team quest. And color-wise it works, it's just I didn't want to do it. And then obviously we put all the characters involved. So Mimori, Kazuki, Kai, and Kagura. I would have put Hero in here, except Hero wasn't involved in his quest for this video. I don't know why Hero's quest starts after everyone else's. But you know what, it worked out. I do like all of their things. I don't know why Kai's was weird like this. I know I grabbed his from a different website compared to everyone else, but I don't know why his was in a different website when I found one in on the website a few weeks later for another thumbnail but you know what it is what it is then after that i believe it's swordcraft supremacy right yep the wind streak challenge shadowverse club okay for some okay here we go so next up we have the swordcraft um supremacy so i believe this is around the time we started using more decks because we had already hit the point where i felt confident in fafnir mainly because i think fafnir hit level 20 or because fafnir was about to hit level 20 and i wanted every deck to be able to be played at level 20 so we played swordcraft and we basically rushed everyone down and i showed off all the cards we used that was like my introduction to the video so you know we have quick blader 
uh, Novice Trooper, both really good cards with Storm that allowed us to pressure out people. As we can see, Quick Blade is even in the thumbnail, dead center. We have the Swordcraft symbol. We have Sea Queen Otohime, who was pretty much in the deck to ace for a long time because I had no other choice, and I don't really like her. But I think when we eventually replace her, quote unquote, we do end up adding the replacement in the thumbnail as well. We have Alwida's Command, which um gets us more cards with either Storm or War, so that's pretty solid. And of course, we have the Swordcraft Supremacy with the color matching the color of the uh, symbol. So all around, I think it's a pretty solid thumbnail. You know, it gets to explain everything. We get to know that we're using Swordcraft for the first time. So all around, it's a pretty good thing. Or maybe we used Swordcraft for the first time in the previous episode on the Team Quest one. I don't really remember. But this is like the first main episode of the Let's Play that we're using it. Then after the Win Streak Challenge comes, uh, you know, the Shadowverse Club Showdown. So... I do wish I saved this thumbnail for the end because considering what the Redux version of this was, and I already knew I would regret making this thumbnail so early because I knew I would not be able to top it. Um, so all these characters were pulled... Okay, so all their, you know, back, all their ace creatures, Chrono Witch, Ignis Dragon, Victorious Blader, and uh, Brilliant Fairy, respectively, they were all pulled from the fandom and just, like, blown up to full art size. While Mamori, Kazuki, Hiro, and Kai over here, they were all pulled off of Grand Blue Fantasy, and Heroes and Mimoris, like, they both have, like, these 20 heart health things. Like, Kazuki and uh, Kai look fine, but then Mimori has, like, these little flowers coming out of her, and then Hiro, if we got to see his full thing, like, he has this fiery stance with him and like this this 20 health thing that goes off to the side it's just amazing and i'm really glad like i got to put it together on a small quality thing it does not look good but up quality compared to the other thumbnails i think it looks pretty great and then of course we have the shadow vs club showdown in it because these are the four we fight because we can't fight ray at this point because you can't fight ray at any point during the main game to my knowledge at least and you can't fight kagra at this point because kagra is too busy being with student council press so it's all around a pretty nice thumbnail it is definitely one of my favorites and i do wish i had saved it for the end where we had a redux version of this but hey it is still pretty damn cool to look at it's fire in my opinion definitely one of my like this was definitely in the top five along with kagura so i think within the first 14 episodes that was episode what 14 right um let's just check i know kagura was episode eight i think so one two three four five six seven this was six this is seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13. So in the first 13 episodes, I had two thumbnails I thought were already in the top five guaranteed. Uh, then comes the next episode, which is the Phone Snatcher. So this one was about us learning that um, Seiya Kimakura's brother, Takuma Kimakura, is the Phone Snatcher, the guy who's pretty much going around campus and stealing everyone's phones after he beats them in the game of Shadowverse. So obviously we have to have this big, mean picture of Takuma in there. Thankfully the game gives us a beautiful cutscene for that. And then of course I gotta label him so all of us know who he is and i didn't know what to really give him so i just gave him their ace creature which was axe pirate he took a hard bit to crop like if you kind of take a look at him he's obviously not fully cropped but honestly on a low quality image it looks pretty good though um because again you have the big city cube curve face you got axe pirate you got the phone snatcher and it fits the color theme pretty well i think all around it's solid the only thing that kind of just is weird is the fact that he has axe pirate and at this point we don't really fight say yet but or not say we don't really fight Takuma yet, so we shouldn't really be able to see what his ace looks like. But that's pretty much all I can say about his thumbnail is kind of just like to show off in the moment. Then of course we go to our next thumbnail, which is the Beer and Critical Trial. Oh, I know why these are out of order because I made them out of order. Um, anyways, the Beer and Critical Trial. So say uh, or not say I keep getting a little confused. Uh, Takuma challenged us in the B rank, uh, or the C, the bronze cup, not, bron yeah, the bronze cup, to make him stop being the phone snatcher and get back all the phones, so we also had to take on the beer critical trial to hit there, so we became the quote-unquote swordcraft king, because I think I just kept drawing cards of storm and consecutively, consecutively top decking, definitely quick player came in helpful, and I believe Sea Queen came in helpful too, also she just looked really good on that thumbnail, so I just thought I could bring her in here, and then obviously, um, this one becomes a staple in a lot of the rank up ones where it's literally just the rank up screen. Like the moment we rank up with us fist bumping the sky and I thought either in this screenshot or like a previous one that I was going to use for the thumbnail, it looked weird. Like our character's eyes were either closed or it just looked wrong. So then, yeah, I just chose to go there. And then obviously we have our uh, symbol over here because we're still using Swordcraft and I need to make it clear that we're playing Swordcraft. Then, of course, because we did the bronze, uh, we did the B-Ring Critical Trial for a reason, we, of course, partic participate in the Bronze Cup. Now, this thumbnail, this is a weird one, because if you see it, 
this is where our character is, and this is where Takuma's character is. Now, if we take a quick look at that, yeah, those are two... Uh, it's, it's not nearly as bad as what I do with another thumbnail, but those are two different uh, standing podiums. And then, of course, we have Takuma standing on one side, us standing on the other. These are like literally two different screenshots of the exact same scene. You can't even see it still right here. I think I may have put it over a little too much. And then, of course, we have the bronze cup class written in like brownish color to match it then we have the sword craft and the dragon craft represent each other i was gonna try to put our ace creatures in this and i did try but the reason why i was against is while axe power fit perfectly fafnir did not so i didn't want to put fafnir in here sadly because it didn't fit also because you couldn't tell we were running out of room like it was it was definitely struggling to like put stuff consistently and i was really lucky that takuma's thing perfectly fit over mine because if it didn't i tried using it with ours and as you can see ours actually overlines takuma's face with a little red thing right here here, so I'm really glad that it worked out in our favor. Then, of course, we have the next thumbnail after that, as I double-check YouTube for this one. Uh, Cooking with Bloodcraft and Pro, Re Pro Research. Eh. So, Cooking with Blood Bloodcraft and Pro Research. So, Bloodcraft we tried using first in the Bronze Cup, actually, and it didn't work out um, because we lost twice and it just was horrible. So in this one, we tried to reconstruct our Bloodcraft deck and then we beat Alice Kurobane, who I did not remember had my favorite theme in the game. I didn't know she had that theme, but I thought it was just in the post game because I never heard her actually use it. or I don't remember her here using it. I just remember whenever I found that theme on YouTube, Unstoppable Impulse, I remember people saying they always tried to fight Alice to find that theme. So I just assumed uh, Alice had that theme in the post game only but apparently she had it in the main game which is why i went full blast in this game and we just destroyed her blood wolf razor claw ambling wrath cream vampire everything worked out i think there was even like one or two other matches where everything also worked out we just bullied the ai with bloodcraft so this is pretty much the start of our bloodcraft journey and i tried to make a joke with it i was like oh we're back we are ready ready for vengeance and you know it's a pun because bloodcraft focuses on the concept of vengeance so yeah i just thought it was honestly a pretty cool thing that we could do and also if you can't tell we zero to 20 her i mean yeah she dealt us damage and obviously playing bloodcraft we did ourselves damage but um yeah at the end of the game we had 20 defense she had zero so i i say it was a pretty accomplished uh mission and getting the thumbnail to speak volumes then of course we have the pro research thumbnail so in this thumbnail you know we're trying to get information oh yeah in this thumbnail we're trying to get information on other pro players such as marcel who are going to be playing in the uh in the silver cup so in this one we're trying to get more information this time on miyabi zaizenji who is also going to be playing in the silver cup and we know she's a pro player and we know say is going to know something about her but to get to say we have to get through takuma first and you know i put say in the thumbnail over here because why not for some reason i couldn't find the image from earlier and then as for this one um you know, it's just a screenshot of us getting ready to fight takuma and then i put over here in the corner why can't it ever be easy with you two because i know say is not going to be easy when we inevitably fight him in the gold cup and i know takuma isn't going to be easy because it's takuma so i'm just like why can't it ever be easy with you two why does it always have to end in a fight and then he does end up beating us so we can't abuse the bloodcraft thumbnail abilities again but we did end up beating him with dragoncraft and i felt like dragoncraft has had too much of fame so far so i felt like we didn't need to put dragoncraft back into the fame boat and now as i double check okay side quest okay i think these next ones are going to be in order a little bit so following that <clears throat> give me a second uh, following that we have our next side quest episode so this time we have moru and lucia joining the squad and this time i decided to do all of them in black highlights because mainly because of lucia's because it looked really cool and then kai followed suit because his actually looked cool the only one that didn't look cool was heroes because i couldn't find like a different red that fit hero so he was just stuck with the same blood red that lucia was which felt weird but that's why they're on the same side so you know we have like screenshots of each of them at their moment in the story so we have lucia in the moonlight this was originally supposed to be just the main thumbnail but i was like you know let's try to get everyone at once we have kai and us we have kazuki and us we have, but weirdly enough, both in the same place. We have Hero and us trying to protect a kid. Hero ended up taking the longest time with the filming of that process. I remember I was annoyed because I was on a time crunch, and Hero just chose to take a sweet-ass time finishing a story that, for some reason, he couldn't start in the last one. Then, of course, we have Kagra and us... Um, I think beating the pseudo phone snatchers or getting ready to beat the pseudo phone snatchers. And then, of course, we have Moru trying to search for a book. And then, of course, we have Mimori, who 
I mistook a very specific part in her story for another part, but you know what? It's fine because that part got to be used as the main function of a thumbnail, but this is not the first time anymore I got thumbnail priority. So yeah, also just looked really cool with her name in between both me and her. So that's this thumbnail. I did like putting it together. It was definitely one of my favorites. Uh, definitely is in the top 10. I would not say top 5. Simply because the other two, if they're not in my top three, I'm pretty sure they are in my top three, but if the other two I said weren't in the top five earlier, or like aren't in the top three earlier, then I definitely need to save place for the top five. So that one is in the, at least the, probably the top six, and if there is space for the top five, it's probably like one of the, and we'll just probably move the other two down, and then this one will be in the top, this will be the fifth song, those other two will either be third or fourth respectively. Then of course we have the A Critical Rank Trial, so again, us and the rank up, this time it feels more natural compared to before. We call it the Unstoppable Duo because Every time we play Bloodcraft, we see Blood Wolf, we see Ambling Wrath. The combos just work too well. We obviously just choose to keep the streak going and keep these guys in the thumbnail or like keep them in the deck together because it seems pretty cool. And then, of course, we have the thumbnail that I thought, again, like how I thought I couldn't surpass, where to go? Like how I thought I couldn't surpass the Shadowverse Cup Southern Down. I did not think I would surpass this one later because after I made this thumbnail, I remembered that we have to fight these two again in the same episode later in the future. So I thought I was screwing myself over by calling this, uh, you know, the silver... Well, I knew the name was fine, but having these two in it. And originally, it was supposed to be them... Um, I think it was supposed to be them separately challenging us, and the later version of the thumbnail where we have to fight them in the same episode again, that one has it like that, where it's just them fighting us separately... Oh, wait, no, it was during the cutscene. It was a, well, actually, no, I know it was them fighting us separately. And sadly, that never happened, but for this one. So I do remember going through iterations of this thumbnail, remembering that I had to do that. So this time we have both their names, introduce them as characters because we have to see them again later. We go with them by their title, the Jobert sisters, because everyone knows them by the Jobert sisters. Of course, we have the symbols too. And because we technically don't see their ace creatures, I mean, I don't, I think we do get to see Vivian play Mordecai at least once. I don't think Vanessa plays Noxious Elf, though, in this match. I don't think she plays it until her second match. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure she doesn't. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But, uh, yes, yeah, so, you know, we just got to show up both of them in a high-quality thumbnail where they're up close to us. You have no idea how fast I had to clip that screenshot because they... The set, like, that screenshot is in between two lines, and they move so quickly. Like, I had to sl slow the speed down. I had to take that screenshot as fast as possible. I had to do everything. So I'm really glad that this thumbnail kind of turned out the way it did. I also just love saying their name, the Jobea sisters. It's just so fun. So I felt like I had to do that, even if it wasn't going to uh, turn out right. Then I believe the next one is, okay, just going through these. Yep, okay, so... Next one is going for gold. This one I struggled to find a thumbnail for because this was recorded right after the Silver Cup showdown, I believe. And it was recorded in that crutch time because Vivian took so fucking long to beat that I didn't really have time to do anything big for going for gold. So I literally put literally nothing happens because nothing story-wise happens in going for gold because I literally can't do anything. Like, I have no time to do anything. It's a short... 30 minute video that is just us fighting two people it doesn't matter i can't do like the battle us winning thing because we did it in the first two episodes and i was just like f it so screenshot of the chapter because i've been wanting to do that for a while now and i guess now i finally get to do it and then we put literally nothing happens because literally nothing happens so that that's literally the story behind that one for once it has like an actual story that means it what it does then we had the everything is going right thumbnail. Weird how this is a precursor because what? How many videos are uh, left before that? Before the whole mini losing streak arc begins? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five episodes later. We the, like this is a precursor to five episodes later. Where everything goes horribly wrong. But um, pretty much in this thumbnail. We lose our Bloodcraft deck because it's already reached level 20 because we've just been spamming the deck 24-7. And then we get to say hello to our new Runecraft deck where I've been looking forward to spamming Dimension Shift 24-7. Uh, that does not happen very often, I might add. And then for this thumbnail, I didn't really know exactly what to do. So I just took a screenshot of Moru scaring everyone and then... Um, us being beside Moru because I can and I will. It would be more appropriate if I was playing Havencraft here, but because I was trying to avoid spoilers, I guess, at this point. Well, actually, no, at this point we had met Moru, so I was fine with building Havencraft because I also built Bloodcraft when we built, uh, when we met Lucia. So I don't know why I didn't just make it, uh, I guess I was trying to follow my original thing where I remember before originally I played Swordcraft right after I played Dragoncraft and then Bloodcraft right after I played, played Swordcraft and then Runecraft right after I played Bloodcraft. So I guess it makes sense I was trying to go in order of that. So yeah, there was nothing really too special about the thumbnail except that it just accidentally led to being a precursor. Again, wasn't supposed to be a precursor, it just kind of acted like it. 
Um, then, of course, past this thumbnail, finally I have to stop playing the V all button. Then after this thumbnail came the double A rank critical trial, right? Oh, came the Everyone Struggles, and then came that thumbnail. Okay, so Everyone Struggles was the next story episode. So in this case, we took a moment from everyone's story who, when they were struggling. Uh, like Hero, Lucia at some point just doesn't show up. So this took a while to get because I had to go through each of these individually, and my god, did it take forever to get these screenshots. But, you know, we have Mamori over here saying, like, it is out of context. It doesn't sound like she cares, but then we kind of, like, take a look at that question mark. She's like, oh, the original actor is back. That's great, right? And then, you know, we have Cogger over here who just talked about she feels like she's, uh, uh, you know, do you remember what she had told you before, which requires context, but it's the best quality shot I could get. And then we have Kai being scared of Ghost, Moru just getting pissed off, Kazuki uh, uh, being annoyed that he can't win, and then Hiro getting the biggest part of I'm going to quit Shadowverse. That took so long to find for some reason and i just had to make that like the biggest screenshot and then hero's head got cut off i wanted to put hero um bigger but thankfully the text box fit it because i was so annoyed that i couldn't get his full face in here oh i don't know why i clicked out of that um just to set this up for later i guess then we had the a rank critical trial so the a rank critical in this episode i was supposed to do all the alice quests or sorry this episode was supposed to do all the alice quests but i forgot to do it so that's why alice got her own episode two episodes later anyways um in the a rank critical trial run so or double a rank critical trial you know it's again uh celebrating we got fafnir we got clay golem we got snowman because you know we tried to beat it fully with runecraft we failed so then we switched over to dragoncraft because dragoncraft was more successful because we're more comfortable playing dragoncraft and then like i said earlier the next episode of the series was the keeping up with alice kurobane uh one where you know we get to basically do most of alice's story because i kept forgetting to do her because i kept forgetting where she was or that I could do her quest. So we end up having this episode where it's basically just a focus on her and her story. And because we get to have a match with her and get to hear Unstoppable Impulse. And we also get to see Skeleton Raider for the first time. I just like to put Skeleton Raider in the thumbnail too. Because honestly he's really cool. For those of you that don't know I'm a fan of knights. And mainly knights on horses. So getting this guy in the thumbnail is pretty much a win for me. And I think it's pretty cool. Then comes this next one. Which starts the mini arc of us is this the mini arc of us losing oh wait no no no. oh the alice corbani one doesn't happen after the uh the what's it called it doesn't happen after the a rank critical trial one this one happens after it and then the alice corbani one happens and the glittering gold cup so originally supposed to involve everyone that was in the gold cup so it was supposed to involve say in the thumbnail ko in the thumbnail moru in the thumbnail hero in the thumbnail but I didn't feel like grabbing the other three, and we already had this really cool screenshot of us versus hero. So I was like, cool, we keep that, we make like, like, this is the only time I used, um, like, gradient colors because I thought it looked really cool, and this was a pain in the ass to set up. But, uh, you know, the glittering gold cup across the camera. We have Fafnir stare down Ignis. We have the Shadowverse stare down in the middle, and then I tried to reference the Tai Lung versus Poe battle, like, our battle will be legendary. And I would have said our battle will be legendary, but the reason why I said our clash would be legendary, and then Ignis Dragon agrees, is because it's foreshadowing to the video that neither of them get on camera together or at all or at all i don't remember if he gets ignis or if he doesn't or if i get fafnir if i don't i just remember at no point on camera were they in the were, were, they, were they on the board at the same time which sucked because i remember the first time i played this match hero top deck ignis played it i top deck fafnir played it killed ignis with an evolution um he then top decked bejeweled played it added the ignis back called it evolved it killed fafnir I draw, I top deck my own Bejeweled, I played it, I fetch back Fafnir, I call Fafnir Evolve it, I kill his Bejeweled with Fafnir on play skill, I ram Fafnir into Ignis, and then he top decks a second Ignis. So I, I remember that happening, and that's why I wanted to say our clash or our battle would be legendary, but, um, you know, because it never actually happened, I chose to foreshadow the video's outcome, quote unquote. And instead, put our clash would be legendary, and Ignis agrees. But thankfully, Ignis had a full art, and then sadly, Fafnir didn't, which is why I tried to keep Fafnir out of thumbnails when he was like cropped like this, because he looks really weird on crop. In fact, here's actually what it looks like when he's on crop like, he just loses half his body. So I was trying to avoid that. Then again, like I said, we have the Alice Cora body thumbnail. Then we have my favorite part of the series, ultimately the losing arc. So, the losing arc is essentially where everything went wrong. And weirdly enough, around these three episodes, these three, to be more exact, these two episodes in time, 
And this was on December 30th to December 31st. I remember this because every single effing thing in my life went wrong at that moment. The world fell apart for me. Like, no, like not even joking, both Let's Play wise and real life wise. But, so here pretty much what happened was, I lost a lot of games, back to back to back. So I just had the you lose thing. This was supposed to be an easy segment of the game because I remember the last time I played it, I got I was in and out, but it didn't happen. So instead, we took this thumbnail or like this moment that we lose, and then we just said like, what actually happened? Because I am astonished. I didn't know what to do. My mind was broken. So I was like, you know what? It's fine. We lost. Let's try again. The losing streak continues. Do you know what this episode was originally called? Before it was even uploaded? The Lost Episode. This episode on the computer was called The Lost Episode. It was not supposed to be edited. It was not supposed to be uploaded. Do you know why I uploaded this? Because I did not think I would get time between this episode and this episode. Because I didn't record this episode or even think about recording it yet. I didn't think I would get time in between those two to start recording. So you know what? I was like, you know, F it. I'm gonna just gonna say Losing Street continues, edit it, upload it, and I was just too depressed to continue. Like, I stopped recording for that day. I had four hours of recording, and I was just too depressed after these two to continue recording. So I stopped, and then, you know, the next day it goes horrible, and I needed to win that day, and it just didn't work out for me. And then I just said, why can't I win? I, I, I was just like, why can't I win both in life and in the game? And then, I, like, I don't know what, why, but when I got home that day, I was so determined to win. I don't, so I don't remember if it was the 1st of January, or if it was the 31st of December, or if it was, like, some first day, or, like, the first week in January. I don't remember when, but the next time I recorded, I was ready with a vengeance. So I went to this, so I remember I had this entire idea, I'm gonna upgrade my Dragoncraft deck, I'm gonna get Dragonic for Vore, I'm gonna get all these cards with Storm, I'm gonna beat ass. So I knew who exactly to go to. The Dragoncraft guy that we've been playing against the entire time, who's my favorite character, more or less to train against, in, like, our normal classroom, go up against him play against this neutral deck i'm gonna use runecraft i'm gonna use dragoncraft i'm going to find some way to beat him i'm gonna end the losing streak and i'm gonna get better so that's exactly what we did we went to him we lost i think every match except for one or i think we did lose every match and he brought out this whole neutral deck that i was not prepared for he brought out lucifer he brought out prince of darkness he brought out sack of field he brought out this weird thing that prince of darkness gives him that pretty much has storm i think his name is like dark raider or something but i like i literally just couldn't win but no matter what my my entire words during that entire, like, my entire thought process was, no matter how many times it takes, I will win, because I need a win, I want a win, no matter what, I will win, it doesn't matter how many attempts I gotta go through for this one, so... After like 30 minutes of suffering, I stopped the video, but unlike this one where originally I didn't plan to upload, and again, I uploaded it before I even finished this video, or before I even started recording it, before I even thought about this video, I already had this one uploaded and edited, but I was at a new mindset, I was ready to win, and then we moved on, and then the next episode, what happens? We play the upgraded Dragoncraft when I buy packs off camera. What? What's the first thing we do? We beat this guy. He's out of our way. We show him the power of our new Dragoncraft deck. And that's where I'm like, oh, it's so on. We're ready. So what do we do? We go take on the other two guys. Or, I mean, we try to take on all three players that beat our asses. So, you know, the Havencraft player, the Runecraft player, her. This is the Havencraft player, by the way. And the Swordcraft player that kicked our ass. Um, we also have a Bahamut at the same time because I got really lucky in pulling a Bahamut when I was thinking about it. But um, we didn't get to play the Swordcraft player in this episode. But um, we beat this guy. We beat the Runecraft girl, we beat the Havencraft guy on the first try. We show why we are here. We get our supremacy back. We get our title back. We're ready. We are ready to win. We are confidence restored. So all those times we were winning before, and I was just feeling, and after all those losses we had that made me feel depressed, we were on a winning streak. We were out for vengeance. So then, of course, we move on to our next thumbnail, which is the Master Rank of Chief. So this is where we also beat the Shadow, or not the Shadow player. We beat the Swordcraft player. We lose the first match. I think we were playing Bahamut, and then we win the second match uh, when we're playing um, Fafnir. Then we, you know, we become mastering players. We show off the new cards that we've been using for our combo. So Cunning Wyvern, who it was actually the Dragoncraft kid over here. Let me find the thumbnail again. It was actually him that introduced us to it because he has it in his deck. So he, he actually made me want to use it. Phoenix Roost, which was definitely a helpful combo. The Woe Dude deck made me think about it. See Brandon Dragon for more Storm. Fafnir because Fafnir's been hard carrying us lately. And us getting mastering because for once I do feel like smiling and pumping the air with a fist because I genuinely I'm so happy that we beat past the losing mini arc and I'm just so proud of myself for you know getting good essentially 
And then, of course, we have the Club Quest finale. So it is, as it says, my favorite quest episode. Like, even though I had not recorded the Lucia, Moru, and Kagura quest ending video, this was my favorite quest episode because it has all of our main characters ending it, especially Mamori's. If you can tell, Brilliant Fairy is wrong here. This is the actual cost of the real Brilliant Fairy, but the Brilliant Fairy in the game cost five, which is why I was trying to cover it with this, but I just chose not to because I'd have to cover it with the name. So we took all the screenshots of everyone's um, quest ending, and then we slapped their ace cards in. So we know we got Alf, Skeleton Raider, Kai with Chrono Witch, uh, Kazuki with Vitori's Blader, and of course Hero with Ignis Dragon. And then we have Memori with Brilliant Fairy. And we get the screenshot that made me cry the first time I saw it because Memori just rehearsed her scene to us in the most beautiful moonlight moment i just felt so proud so all around i was very um proud of this thumbnail it was like a culmination of everyone of team tensei so seeing this thumbnail made me feel really good and i enjoyed making it and getting to see all these like different uh screenshots get put in together even they kind of like looked messy a little bit and then obviously memory gets thumbnail priority because she was my favorite character out of all of them then the next episode following that one, we have uh, the Underverse. So this is where the Underverse starts taking place, or as I like to call it, the second half of the game. Because the second half of the game is pretty much the Underverse copying the first half. So, you know, we second, first, and third level, or final level, or uh, A rank, or sorry, C rank, B rank, a rank, double A rank, master rank, etc. So, um, you know, we get to fight all these strong players. This one it was just cookie, cookie cutter, like eyes uh, rank up one, or not eyes rank up one, eyes the current one right there. But it's like the one from earlier with uh, Mai's rank up journey. So we just have the setup of how it goes. So the middle chunk of the game, me giving commentary, and then we get like a screenshot of I talking about the levels. So all around, very like cookie cutter it's pretty much copied and pasted from my thumbnail experience then of course we have um the one on after that which is oh i guess this is the last time i got to pull the dragon craft one because i don't know why i couldn't find it afterwards but this is where i didn't really know what to do with this one we had a bunch of fights i was half tempted to keep it what the thumbnail actually was because the video as we can see it was 44 minutes and 44 seconds long and the original youtube randomly chosen thumbnail was dark angel olivia no joke and it was her getting summoned so i was like and the funny thing is, me and my friend were just talking about, like, the Angel 444 thing. So I was like, there's no way that this is, like, a coincidence. So I chose to make that, like, thumbnail priorities in the bottom. And then we have, like, the screenshot of Ko and, uh, um, what's his name? Zuo talking to us because we're going to see them next episode. So I was like, he's our goal. Ignore him because no one cares about Ko. Bleh. I'm kidding. Everyone loves Ko. And then we have, like, their respective decks, even though we're not going to see Ko fight at all because I don't plan on fighting Ko during the story. So... We have Bloodcraft, we have Dragoncraft. It's simple enough. And then past that, we have the Zuo Onizuka thumbnail. So we get Zuo in an up-close match. We have his name, as per usual. We have his main card. So Brutal Dragonute, but also Hellflame Dragon and Dragon Flute song because his entire deck revolves around them, although Brutal Dragonute is his ace. And then we have the Dragoncraft symbol because, obviously, sadly, I couldn't get, like, an actual cutscene with Ko, but that's his pretty much, or Zuo, Zuo, which is pretty much as close as I'm going to get for it. So I just kind of went with it. Then we had the second level, which was a funny thumbnail to me, because the second level, we didn't really have much to use, so what I did is I took this character, who I am so glad I randomly fought during that episode, because he says the best line in the game, and it's so sad, it's so funny, this was for my dad, wherever he is, <laughs> and it's just so sad and funny, because like it gives, <laughs> it's so random out of nowhere, because that's literally the first thing you hear when he starts the match. So it's so funny because it's out of nowhere, but it's so sad because, like, what it actually is. And I just, like, had to make the, the thumbnail. And it was just, it, it was too good to be true. It was also too sad to be true. So there's that as well. And then beyond that, we also have the following episode. The Search for Shadow Bahamut, the most annoying thumbnail I wanted to make. Because I knew, going into this, what would come afterwards. We have to go through the annoying process of, and the tedious process of trying to find Shadow Bahamut. Then we have to fight Leon. And then on top of that, we also have to fight the Jobea sisters again. Except I know Vivian's going to be more annoying than usual because her last word's proc twice. So, and then obviously I have this shittily drawn arrow pointing to Leon, so we know like to talk about him. So now we have Shadow Bahamut in here who I tried to crop the full art of. I failed miserably, so I just put the actual card. Uh, but because it actually appears 
it like on the fandom there's no version of it that doesn't have like a times one over it so i had to crop that out so you can kind of tell it's like kind of badly cropped right here but then i put like why are you so difficult to find and then i have leon and then we have the badly drawn arrow and then i was saying oh great now we have to deal with him too and then we have us standing outside of his building it was just like kind of a thumbnail to set up the precursor of what we're going to do next and then the thumbnail that I loved making and then hated making because I knew what it was going for. The video where we fight Leon Orange. So, this video is titled Leon Orange. It's very simple. We fight Leon Orange. He has his big annoying sacred line that he loves to spam that can't die by any means. And then beyond that, of course... It gets it's untargetable thanks to his sanctum. It can make more copies of it. I should have been playing the storm variant of this deck at this point. If you know what I'm talking about, good. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch the finale before this episode and you'll see what I'm talking about. And of course we have the Havencraft symbol. And then I say, I hate that line, and I wanted to say I hate you too, Leon. But originally I think I was like, you are the most annoying and I hate you. But I realize that that could possibly be taken as a direction towards the viewers, even though I feel like most viewers don't understand that I'm talking about Leon. So I just chose to make it I hate that line, and then we have Leon Orange in the bottom, and I just couldn't deal with the thumbnail. I think it looks cool. I just hate this thumbnail because of what it represents in my mind. It represents me fighting Leon. Then we have the Jobeo Sisters Round 2 Electric Boogaloo. I felt like it would be weird introducing their names again, and I felt like it would be weird introducing the Jobeo Sisters thing again, but because that's the title, I just put the Jobeo Sisters again. And then, of course, we have their Ace cards, Mordecai the Duelist, and while, yes... Technically, Path to Purgatory is not Vanessa's ace card. It is Noxious Elf in terms of uh, followers. Path to Purgatory is her deck's win con. Like, she can win without Path to Purgatory because she almost did in the first match we had with her in the Silver Cup. But um, Path to Purgatory is pretty much her deck's win con. So we made that the thumbnail party and then of course we have their uh you know their little icons of force craft and shadow craft i remember earlier when i said uh the joe bear or like later when we did like the same thing that we did in the bronze cup thing against takuma where like the thumbnails were overlapped yes if you see in the small corner you see a little bit of blue and in this small corner you see a little bit of red and if we move this over ever so slightly oh look at that they line up yeah, this was done on purpose. So, yeah. <laughs> that that was done intentionally so I could get them both on the screen. And sadly, you can kind of see it a little bit in the background, but that's just kind of how it goes, which is, it's a good thumbnail. It just looks weird if you pay close enough attention to it. And then we move on to our final level thumbnail. It literally just says easiest level ever. I call it the final level as the title, and we just said easiest level ever because... These three went down without a hitch. They were the easiest players I've ever fought against in the entirety of the Underverse. They posed no challenge, and I felt like I had no reason to highlight them outside of the fact I couldn't think of anything else for the thumbnail. Then beyond that, we have Preparing for Moru, which I titled completely wrong. Uh, this one was... I wanted to get all the three guys outside about because like the camera was of bad quality. I just chose to make it all of them when we start fighting them and we get to show off their decks. You know, we have the Disheartened Man who's Havencraft, we have the Exhausted Man, who's Bloodcraft, and we have the Crestfallen Man, who's Forecraft. And then I tried to make the center, but if you tell center, it's just blocking off his face. So we just put it down here, and it's like, why could we not just fight Moru? Because we were supposed to fight Moru. And again, I was on a time crunch, and I was supposed to fight Moru that episode. But no, Moru just copped out and said, I don't feel like fighting today. So... That's pretty much what this thumbnail was, just us setting up for it. At first, I didn't like the thumbnail, but you know, now looking back on it, I really do like the color scheme and how, like, we got all three fighters in it. I just don't like how the text turned out, but again, it was either that or we just cover the guy's face, which either way, it's a lose-lose. Then we have the Underverse Supreme Champion. Originally, it was called Lu Lucia and Moru, or, like, Lucio Nezuka and Moru Abelard, but I felt like that'd be the name of their quest videos, so I have to remember, I have to go, like, edit the quest videos individually. I might do that now, I might not. But pretty much, um, you know, I, I just chose why have their names when the literal title is called Underverse Supreme Champion. While neither of them were called that, we are called that because we beat Lucia. So 
We call it our Supreme Champion. We have their names and their colors, respectively. Technically, gray is not the color of Havencraft. Technically, that's the color of neutral, but I did not feel like using white because this was already used in white. And I looked at it before and it just looked weird to me. We have their symbols, respectively, and then we have their ace cards overlapping in the back here. We have God of Curses, and then we have Blood, or not Blood Emperor, Dark Emperor. How I wish Dark Emperor was facing from the right. And then we have Lucia and Moru, respectively. Pretty cool. I don't know why, but the first time I put Lucia on here, he was really blurry. I don't know why that was the case. Then we move on to the friend quest finale thumbnail. Yes, friend quest finale. So it's pretty much the last of the friend quests. So, you know, Kagura, Lucia, Moru, and even Shirori, who we had involved in the th uh, friend quest recently. And then us getting all their ace cards, which is why the last quest also had that one. So God of Curses, Doc Emperor, Skeletal Vampire, even though Shirori doesn't really play Shadowverse, she did give a Scarlet Vampire. Or it was, I think it was her quest that gave a Scarlet Vampire. And then it was Holy Saber for Kagura. So... It was just all them known again. We have the return of the blatant bad background. This background was intended for like the friend quest videos, but it was not intended for later thumbnails that also use it. But that one was fine. Then, of course, we have um, the Nationals Begin thumbnail. So, you know, this was supposed to be in this uh, this series, this video went down a lot longer than it was supposed to because Moru decided not to lose for 30 minutes. And the same with Lucia. But then, you know, Lucia wasn't nearly as bad comparatively because at least Lucia was fun to lose against. And then the game decided not to give me a break and go right into a cutscene where pretty much everyone gets Master Rank, which I was fine with, but I wish it happened in here, but whatever. So anyways, in the National Time video, Nationals happens. That That's pretty much it. So we get like this thumbnail of the entire Team Tensei getting, hearing the Nationals announcement, and then we just have, it's National Time because... Why not? It just does what the thumbnail kind of says. It's the time to start nationals. <clears throat> then on top of that, we have the, um, because nationals is like the entirety of the qualifying round, we get to the, um, you know, semifinals, quarterfinals, all those type of finals. So this is the quarterfinal thumbnail where we have the return of Kagra. And I remember I was really going to put the other version of Holy Saber, you know, the one that has the mask. But then when I was looking up Holy Saber again, I found out now, Holy Saber does have an evolved version that's just like this one, but it doesn't have the mask. And that was important to me because in this video, or before, Kagura talks about not needing her mask anymore. So I was glad that I could put the Masked Meister Returns almost in the exact same corner, but, you know, instead, she is the true Kagura Kurosame, which is... The reason why I didn't put her name in the first one, that was not intentional. That was just because I forgot to put her name. But this one, it felt better that I actively forgot to put her name because it acted like a build-up, you know? Because in this one, let me go find it real quickly. In this one, you know, she's known as the Masked Maestro, not Kagura Kurosame. But well, she's known as the Masked Maestro originally. But now we know her as the real Kagura Kurosame. And we get to see the true face hidden behind um, the mask that Holy Saber uses before. And of course, we get the big handcraft symbol too, like how she grew her wings. Now she can truly fly. Like, this thumbnail unintentionally had a lot of symbolism in it, but this was only the real version of symbolism I was going for. So, all right, it was just a really cool thumbnail, and I think it's a really cool callback to the first thumbnail. Then we have our semi-final thumbnail, uh, and then obviously it's titled by Kagura, because Kagura was supposed to be easy. She's supposed to lose in the first two attempts. Nah, she wanted to play for a fucking hour-long video. Uh, but then we have the quarter and semi-finals where we fight both Hero and Lucia. Yeah, so remember that video that I said we loop things over? Yeah, take a very close look at the center mark, and look at what happens when we move it. Yep. So I had to line these up near perfectly, and basically get them... Like that. And the lights also looked weird if you don't line them up perfectly as well. So they, of course, have their two symbols, Bloodcraft and uh, Drancraft, respectively. Thankfully, it looked good, unlike the Jobert sisters, if you look at it close enough. And this one doesn't look good if you look at it close enough, but still. Then we have, you know, Ignis Dragon and Dark Emperor. Thankfully, both of them had full, like, detachable arts I could use. And, of course, we type in their full names. Because I couldn't get the U to work, I just had to copy and paste their names from the fandom. And then, of course, we have the quarter semifinals. All around, one of my favorite thumbnails in terms of quality. It looks cool. We have both their aces standing side by side with their symbols. It's just a good thumbnail. And then we have one of my favorites, this one. So I think this one might be within the top three guaranteed, and that would be the finals, Rei Sawatome, the final thumbnail of the main game, because it is the, you know, the finale of the tournament. We have Bloodcraft, we have Dragoncraft, we have the Shadowverse Showdown. Uh, by the way, I did have to crop this. I think starting, I think in Zuos, I did actually have to crop it, so maybe that's why I don't remember having it. But anyways, Shadowverse Showdown, we get in the Blood Red, and then I found the, uh, I wanted to make it separate, but... 
you can't do that here. Like they have to be the same color. So either I was going to make like a separate text box for, I was just going to do that. And I just chose to do that. But you know, here we have like the different shit of red for us. And then we have the different shit of red, red for Ray. You know, we have the, I am the king, the Shadowverse king. And then we have this bloodless demon behind him. And then I'm like, I won't lose to you, Ray. Fafnir! And then the thing is, this Bloodless Demon is different because in the Champions Battle, I believe it is either cost 8 or cost 9. So, if it's cost 9, it would be funny because that would be mean both of our aces cost 9. But it's just, like, all around really cool. I thought this was a cool Thunder Limit because we had, like, the uh, our Chosen of Red because he gets the Shadowverse Showdown in his color, so we get the Versus in our color. It's just the thumbnail of Ray and us staring each other down so close up right before the text box comes up. So I think it's a really cool thumbnail. Um... Definitely one of my favorites, and is definitely within the top five. I think it's just really cool. Then the next one we have coming right after that would be our uh, start to the post game, the Grand Master Rank Trials. So these ones, um, I had a little bit of fun designing because, uh, you know, we had the Grand Master Rank Trials, so it was just like a screenshot of Leon talking to us about it, and then I couldn't find like an actual version of this because it sees this grand memere. So I just like took the grand master thing and then I just shut, sent it slightly to the bottom so we can see most of the cap and not all of it. I now realize that part of this isn't even showing the full thing. So this was actually like, if you look very closely at the end of the thumbnail, you can kind of like see the top part is, uh you know, has that little block right there from the background. But then, you know, I was just like, I guess we're doing this now because I couldn't really think of anything else to say for it. And then it just has us like looking at our phone, which I think is just like a, Soft thumbnails, like, it doesn't take up too much. And then, of course, I spoke continues wrong here for the uh, the next video. The challenge continues. Um, we have Moggy, Skeleton Raider, Ignis, because we use, like, three different decks here. And then, of course, we have us using this again. But it is slightly different, though, because before it was, like, a close-up of this part. Now it's uh, all of this. And then, like, this is the most tedious thing ever because it's us fighting for more deck codes. And, of course, we have the return of this little marking. And then if, I forgot to return the marking for this one too, but this one gets the exception because it is single-handedly both the dumbest and the smartest thing I've ever done, and that was Ivory Beatdown. I, if you don't know, I hate Shadowcraft. Shadowcraft and Havencraft are my least favorite decks to play against. In the game, it's just Shadowcraft I hate to play against because the AI always top decks with it, and it's specifically because of Vivian. So me being able to just get lucky with a really... And because of these two cards, too, like this one gets more attack every time more of your followers are destroyed, and this one destroys the highest cost follower or the highest attack follower on your opponent's board randomly. So having a full board of Ign or Ivories is getting to rush them was funny because this thing can only attack the leader, and this thing had Ambush. So just for a few turns, I got to bully them, and then I, because I went second, I got to evolve Ivory into this one, so I got to show off both of them, and I just said... I Ivory Beatdown, and it was just a very funny thing, and I got to speed it up, and it just looked so funny on camera, so it's definitely one of my favorite thumbnails making, and I just thought it was really cool to have. It was stupid, and it was just funny, because it was stupid, it was a thing. And then, of course, beyond that, this is where I got sick at, so this is where I began being less confident of if I could finish the daily upload series, because the whole point of the series was to be daily uploads. So, first up, we... So, first up... So, first up, we have the Taking Down the Shadowverse Club, so... This is where I didn't want to have to use this, but I had to because I didn't I didn't remember that I had the whole, you know, having individuals. But also when I thought I, if I would try that, it wouldn't like line up like last time I got lucky because it fit exactly four people. This time I didn't think I could do it. So I gave up on it, which is sad. So maybe I should have tried it. And I said this one went definitely in my head because... I just all of them to cause problems, especially Conqueror, but it was literally only Kazuki and Kai, but Kai caused less problems than Kazuki, he just beat me once, Kazuki beat me twice, so, you know, we have them in their Ace Creatures, respectively, so Holy Saber, Brilliant Fairy, Victorious Blader, Ignis, Chrono Witch, again, Brilliant Fairy having the wrong cost, because the fandom only has the cost from the real game, then we have Shiro taking a quick show up here, because King of Vines... Yeah, King of Vines never appeared, but I'm like 95% sure that fucker had it in his hand, so, you know, we've been meaning to take on, um... We were supposed to take on uh, Kira, not Kira, whatever his name is. Uh, I don't know why I blanked on his name. For some reason, I remembered his name throughout the entirety of the Let's Play. Now I can't remember for the life of me. But we were supposed to fight him the entirety of the Let's Play the second we got the chance to when we hit Master Rank. But we never did because, you know, everything happened with us getting off the losing streak and us having a winning high. So we just kind of ignored it. And, yeah, I just kind of forgot about him. So I just chose to take him on here. And it, we were supposed to lose the first try, but I beat him on the first try, surprisingly. Then we have the Genesis Keys thumbnail, so it's pretty much me making it easy for you, where if you don't want to figure out, like, if you don't want to watch the video to find out the Genesis Keys location, I would understand that, even though the video is 30 minutes long. So I chose to instead make it in the thumbnail, where if you want to find them, just look at the thumbnail and you got your answer. So we got the shopping district, the courtyard, the park, 
Takanome, Underverse Final Level, Underverse First Level, and Underverse Second Level. These are no particular order. These are technically the order I claimed them in outside of this one where I technically claimed it first because I planned to do them on camera and I just accidentally grabbed it without realizing it was actually an Underverse Key. Uh, so yeah, this video was the most annoying to make though because Vivian and Jobert or Vivian and Vanessa were the only ones you had to fight. I do not understand why. Of all of them, these were the only two you had to fight. Like, not even Marcel and uh, Miyabi, because you had to encounter both of them for this thumbnail. I don't know why you had to fight only these two, but whatever. And then, of course, I wasn't confident I would get to make this video but uh, in time, but thankfully I was able to because I got really lucky. And that was the ultimate challenge, the Almighty One. So, originally I was going to call it versus Leon Ranch, the Almighty One, but I was like, you know what? No. Nah. Let's prove a point. So it obviously has the big beat stick known as the Almighty One in the background. It has Leon with his God stance that he pulls when he pulls it out. Uh, being shown here has the Havencraft symbol. Sadly, it has like this little chess symbol from like the computer being you know glaring. And if I was smart and if I wasn't on the time curse that I had to be to make this thumbnail, I would have went to go look up a video found when Leon did this in that video and then just cropped out around it. But to be fair, when I did this, again, time crunch, and I didn't even think I would be able to get the perfect crop on this, but I did, because as you see, I mean, okay, yes, his fingers got cut off a little bit, but he, I got, got like, the perfect crop. Like, you don't see a single background thing, so honest to God, they didn't think it would work. So, all around, though, it was a pretty cool thumbnail. It could have probably had more in it, like maybe Sacred Lion as well. I did try to find Sacred Lion, like how Ignis has one and how Dark Emperor has a full art that needs copy and paste, but it didn't, and I didn't feel like cropping it either in the time crunch, so I just chose to leave with this one. I think it was a pretty good thumbnail. And without further ado, that's it for this video. Um... I guess I'm going to go back and grab all my favorite thumbnails because, honestly, this was a very fun series making thumbnails for. I think they were all really cool in their own respective rights. I definitely had favorites among these as I'm grabbing them now. Where's the Shadowverse one that I pointed out earlier? So, yeah, th like, there are my favorites. I think if I had to pick one for the top five for, like, the fifth slot, this one's actually kind of hard. I think for the fifth slot, I think I would make it... Either Kai or this one. Let's just say it's this one. Just because it's either Kai or this one. Like, it's an honorable mention. So, these are pretty much my top five thumbnail in no particular order. I do think if I had to pick a top three, it would probably be this one. Definitely this one is in the top three. I would say this one's definitely in the top three. And then these two are tied. So, whichever one doesn't get in the top three is number four. And then this one's just number five. So... Without further ado, I'm going to end this one here. I hope you guys enjoyed. It was a very fun video making. It was a very fun Let's Play making. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed the process of all of it. So without further ado, I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, join us on Twitch, and don't forget the only way to start the next video is saying uh, Shadowverse Showdown.